Mrs. Parker. Hi, Hi Mr. Miller. Miller. How are you today? Good. How are you today, Susan? Fine. We've heard a lot about the school bus safety program. It sounds like a great idea. I'm really excited about it. Everyone's involved. Teachers, children, bus drivers, and parents. As a matter of fact, we're having a review of the program right now. If you have a few minutes, why don't you come along and learn all about it? Sounds great. Is it all right if Susan comes along? Absolutely. She can help me. Great. Let's go. Beautiful Hi, Mrs. Place. Johnson. Hi, Mrs. Hello. Adams. Hi. We have some extra guests with us today. Mr. and Mrs. Parker, I'd like you to meet Mrs. Johnson, Susan's bus driver. Hi, how are you doing? And I think you know Mrs. Adams, the third grade oh, teacher. Oh, yes, hello. Good to see you. Mr. and Mrs. Parker, why don't you sit over there? And, and Susan, why don't you sit next to me? The Parkers were interested in our school bus pedestrian safety program, so I invited them along to sit in on our review. That's great. And this is Willie Whistle. Pleased to meet you. Hi there, Susan. Hi, Willie. Willie helped teach Susan and the other children all about school bus pedestrian safety. I sure did. I'll pop back when you need me, boss. Okay, Willie. Working together, we've come to realize that school bus pedestrian safety doesn't start when you get on the bus. It starts at home. Right, Susan? Right. I'm so glad you're here because we need your help. Let me start by telling you what the children are learning about school bus safety. The very first thing we teach is what we call the danger zones around the bus. Mrs. Johnson, would you explain where they are? Yes, those are the areas around the bus where I can't see a child. Sort of like the blind spots when you're driving a car? Exactly, Mrs. Parker, but they're much larger. Where are the danger zones? They go out six feet from both sides of the bus and ten feet from the front of the bus. The entire rear of the bus is off limits. So how far away from the sides of the bus do we stay, Susan? At least three giant steps. And how far from the front of the bus? At least five giant steps. This is something parents can practice with their children. How? by taking three and five giant steps away from something and making sure that three and five giant steps really are six and ten feet for their child. But these are just guidelines. What's important is that they can see me and I can see them. That's why we teach them never to go behind the bus. Even with all the mirrors, it's impossible for me to see them. When walking to and from school, it's best to get back to basics. Whenever a child comes to a street, driveway or alleyway, they should stop, look left, right, and left again before crossing the street. Show them by turning your head when you look for traffic, instead of a glance from side to side. And then, when it's safe, they should cross the street, continuing to look left and right until they're on the other side. But safety really begins at home when children are getting dressed to go to school. What can parents do? Make sure that children wear bright colors that stand out from the background. That makes it easier for drivers to see them, whether it's bright and sunny or gray and rainy. What about those winter mornings when it's almost pitch dark when Susan leaves for school? Try attaching a piece of retro reflective material or a dangle tag to her backpack or something she's wearing. That's a great idea. Speaking of backpacks, make sure everything Susan takes to school is in her backpack. Remind her to keep it closed until she gets to school or home. We don't want anything falling out in or near the bus. We don't want children reaching under the bus or going into the danger zones for any reason. What should Susan do if she does drop something near the bus? Susan? Tell my bus driver, Mrs. Johnson, and wait until she tells me what to do. If I've already gone, they should look left, right, and left again, as if they were crossing before they pick anything up. Children should leave home in plenty of time to get to their bus stop well before their bus is scheduled to arrive, especially in bad weather. This will eliminate the need for those last-minute dashes to the bus that can cause accidents. Parents can help by teaching their children to get up on time and having them leave for the bus stop at the same time every morning. If children cannot tell time, parents should show them what the clock looks like, where the big hand is and where the little hand is when it's time to leave for school. But parents should never allow younger children or pets to go with a child to the bus stop. It's too distracting. So make sure that dogs and other pets are kept at home when it's time to leave for the bus.
By the way, if Susan has a large project or an animal in a cage, they're simply not allowed on the bus. The safe thing to do would be to drive her to school that day. Parents should make sure that an adult goes with young children like Susan to and from the bus stop. The adult should point out any dangers and practice safe pedestrian behavior along the way. Such as? Things like looking before crossing streets or driveways. And how do you look for cars, Susan? I look left, right, and left again until no cars are coming. That's great, Susan. When Susan gets older, she should go to and from the bus stop with friends if possible because there's safety in numbers. Drivers can usually see a group of children more easily than a single child. Where should we stand when we're waiting for the bus so that we're safely out of the way of traffic? At least three giant steps back from the street. Right. We teach children to stay back from the streets so they'll be out of the danger zones when the bus arrives. We tell them to try to move back six feet or three giant steps. This is another good reason to practice taking three giant steps. Discipline on the bus is another important part of safety, particularly in the unlikely event of a problem. That's why we instruct the children to follow the driver's directions when leaving the bus in case of an emergency. The bus driver really is the leader of the safety team. That's right. If children don't stay seated or are noisy, it's hard for me to concentrate on safe driving. Parents can help by working with me if I report disciplinary problems and by not asking me for route changes or special favors. They're simply not allowed. The program also covers getting off the bus. Among other things, Susan was taught to check for cars sneaking by on the right before stepping off the bus, to stay out of the danger zones, and always to look left, right, and then left again before crossing the street. She should practice the same rules of pedestrian safety on the way home as she did coming to the bus stop in the morning. One more thing. Do you ever drive to the bus stop to pick up Susan? Sometimes. When you do, park on the same side of the street as the bus stop. Don't make her cross the street to get to you. But there are so many one-way streets near our bus stop, sometimes you have to drive all the way out of your way just to get on the same side as the bus. I know. It can be inconvenient. But when you park across from the bus stop, Susan has to cross the street to get to you. This can be particularly dangerous if you don't usually meet her after school. She may be so excited at seeing you that she forgets the rules of pedestrian safety <laughs> or assumes that you're taking charge of safety for her. Children are supposed to go directly home from the bus stop. I can't leave anyone off at other than their regular stop without a signed note from home. That's about it, but you can really help by practicing these behaviors with Susan and reinforcing what we talked about today. Anything I missed, Officer Miller? I don't think so. Willie? No, we covered everything, the whole trip from home to school and back. Thanks, Willie. Thanks for taking the time to explain the program to us. We'll do our part. We sure will, because school bus safety really starts at home. It does. And the team approach we're taking, involving children, teachers, bus drivers, and parents, is the best way to go. Because I think we all agree, when it comes to children, there's simply nothing more important than safety. Thank you, Susan. You were a big help today. Thank you both for coming out this afternoon. Good seeing you again.